You know, that's disappointing to me because he's really a man that, you know, gave me an opportunity when nobody else really was. I wouldn't be here without Coach O, and, you know, I'm forever indebted to him as a person and a, as a player, and, you know, our, our relationship will continue for, for the rest of our lives. I love, I love the man. I love the coach. Um, you know, they haven't win, been winning as many games as I know they would like, but, you know, we did just win a national championship two years ago, so. Two years ago, we as a college football fan watched one of the most magical seasons in college football. The 2019 LSU Tigers had it all in high-flying offense, a stud quarterback, a young, innovative offensive coordinator, and a high-energy, fast-talking players coach and coach Ed Orgeron. That 2019 LSU team would have an undefeated season, national championship, and to some, it would go down as the best team ever assembled. Although that was only two years ago, because of the lack of success since then and other factors, it's been reported that today, this 2021 season will be the last season for Coach O at LSU. Now, some people may think, wait, hold up. LSU just came off their biggest win of the season over a ranked Florida Gators team, defeating them 49 to 42. But according to several reports, Coach O and LSU came to an agreement before the Florida game to part ways. Today, I want to talk about why LSU decided to part ways with Coach O. Being an outsider looking in, I was thinking, damn, this man just won a championship two years ago. But the more I looked into it, the more I found out the real reasons Coach O time is up at LSU. But first, what's up, guys? Welcome to NND TV. No more defeats TV. Where all we do is win, never take any losses. And shout out to my boss, guys. If you love talking sports, this right here is the channel for you. So like and subscribe so you never miss out on a video. The question of this video is, is the 2019 LSU team the best team ever? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments. Is the 2019 LSU the best team you have ever seen? Yes or no in the comments. I'll give you a second. Okay, guys, we're talking about the real reason why Coach O is at the dough. Let's get it. Today, the LSU Tigers made it official and let everyone know that this is the last year for Coach O and he'll be out as the head coach. There's a lot of reasons to why this happened and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's dive right into it. Reason number one is lack of success. That's no surprise to anybody watching this video. Their 2019 season was so successful, the NFL came calling. Basically, the whole offense got drafted to the NFL. Joe Brady went to the NFL. Their defensive coordinator went to be the head coach at Baylor. All-American wide receiver Jamar Chase decided to opt out. And when all that happened, the end result was a five and five season. Fast forward to this season, Coach O was feeling the heat. And he even said it himself coming into this season. I was born in Louisiana. I understand LSU's expectations. And I said when I was hired, nobody has to tell me about LSU's expectations. I know exactly what LSU's expectations are, and I invite them. Well, they would come into this season ranked 16th overall, and they take a big fat L to UCLA right off the bat. They'd have to deal with a slew of injuries. No Miles Brennan, no Derek Stingley, no Elias Ricks, no Kayshawn Booty. And that gets us to where we are now. Four and three LSU team, Coach O, LSU agreeing to part ways. Now I started with this being reason number one because winning and expectations are very important to any program, especially LSU. I have a motto. The motto is winning solves everything. So if you're a coach who isn't doing right behind the scenes, if you're a coach that has little things going on behind the scenes that continue to add up and you're not winning 
that's bad news, buddy. But if you are winning, some of that stuff can be swept under the rug. So I want you to keep that in mind throughout this video. So losing on the field, that, that's my reason number one. Reason number two, mm -mm -mm. More people who said they were sexually assaulted are coming forward to join the Title IX lawsuit against LSU. One of them says head football coach Ed Ogeron protected his players from any of these accusations. Ashlyn Robertson says her boyfriend told Coach O one of the players her, according to the amendments filed in court Friday. The lawsuit states Coach O is accused of telling the boyfriend not to be upset because, quote, everybody's girlfriend sleeps with other people. That's quoting the lawsuit. Coach O was supposed to report the accusation to the university's Title IX office, but did not, the lawsuit says. Coach O is now a defendant. Now, anytime your head coach is listed in a lawsuit, especially one of this nature, it does nothing but bring a dark cloud over your program. I'm surprised at that point, Coach O wasn't out the dough. To me, those are tough allegations to just ignore. And if they're true, like I said, if they are true, then how as a parent or as a player could you respect a man like that? Now, talking about respect, there was also points during his tenure where players started to lose respect for Coach O. During the highest point of people, athletes speaking out against social injustices, the LSU Tigers team itself decided to skip practice and do a march on campus. Well, a lot of people noticed that Coach O wasn't at that march. And that day, that became a huge headline. You saw it in articles, you saw it online. Coach O doesn't support his players marching for social injustice. Now, Coach O would end up speaking his piece, giving his side, and he said, look, I didn't even know that they were going on a march. I was, I was getting ready for practice, and then I got the call. Some players say, hey, Coach O brought us together, and we got things taken care of. There was other players in the other reports that said, hey, after that incident happened, you know, when your team is majority Af African American and they're marching for a cause, and some of them think you may be fake or phony, they didn't respect Coach O. But hey, like I said, long as you keep winning, you can sweep things under the rug, right? So, so far we've talked about reason number one, losing on the field. Reason number two, being listed in that lawsuit. And reason number three, losing some of the locker room, losing some of the respect of your players. Well, reason number four is the one that really made me put this video together. Because I don't know if I've ever heard of this from a coach. Now, according to several reports, after Coach O won the championship, he got a divorce with his longtime wife. He got that six-year contract extension through 2026, valued at $42 million. And the last thing he needed to complete the clean sweep, he needed some ladies. He needed some breezies on the side. Now, look, there ain't nothing wrong with having... You know, it's a little, you know, you work hard. You want a beautiful ladies by your side, especially if you're divorced. But players were saying it was interfering with his job as a head coach. One player said this to The Athletic. It was just a distraction. In 2019, there was no what's Coach O doing post game or Sunday during the day. He was laying by, it was, is he laying by the pool with that lady? He was planning events other than, did football what kind of events was coach o planning hey you use your imagination now i dug deeper into this and turns out the man coach o was not only spending a lot of time off the clock on the clock during practices during the drills he'd have the little breezies come to practice sit in the stands do that little dance come on to the field they had the, the 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 his girlfriends and the kids running drills with the players. I cannot make this up. I cannot make this up. You're over here trying to get ready for Alabama. You're over here as a player trying to lock in. Get ready for Florida. Trying to lock in. And you see Coach O girlfriend and her bad and the little badass kids. Come on, man. How can you properly prepare for a game like that? That is just crazy to me. And if that's not enough, oh, Lord, there's more. 
Let me get a drink of water because yes, <laughs> there's more. I'm going to read this strictly from the athletic. It created messes for him. Like the time coach Ogeron pulled up to a woman at a gas station wearing exercise attire. He said, Hey, you look like you work out. You know what? We could work out together. The woman informed Orgeron that she was married and pregnant to which coach Orgeron responded. Why does that matter? Oh Lord. Oh Lord. The woman whose wife is a high ranking LSU official word of this reached the LSU board of supervisors, the collection of prominent LSU attorneys and business owners appointed by the governor who make the most important decisions at LSU. And of course it reached LSU athletic director, Scott Woodward. Oh man. So you mean to tell me this man losing on the field and he pulling up, uh, he taking L's, right? This man taking L's, then pulling up to gas stations, spin game. The According to the athletic, listen, according to the athletic, the man said, hey, you work out, I work out. Oh, well, sir, I have a husband and I'm pregnant. That man said, why does that matter? They caught the man Coach O slipping. They caught this man pimping and slipping. Look, all those reasons, and then you add up that those boys are four and three as a team, and you get the news of Coach O out at LSU. There's a dark cloud. Players not respecting you. You're hitting on women who's married to people who represent this school. You got kids and girlfriends at the practices. Like I said, guys, I promise you, if Coach O was winning, you probably wouldn't hear most of this stuff. Because winning solves it all. But when you don't win, these are the type of things you hear. And for all those reasons together, that's the real reason that Coach O is out the dough.